Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this What Is Wednesday, we're going to be talking about package.json. And package.json is something that you see everywhere in just about any project you work in in modern web development. So this is going to be a brief overview about what the heck that thing even is. We all kind of know it if we worked in it all. And if you're brand new to web development and you've encountered this thing in your projects, well, this is going to give you a good baseline idea of what it's useful for. Now, before we get going, let's quickly talk about leveluptutorials.com. Leveluptutorials.com is the perfect place to learn modern web development. You can head on over there and check out all of these tutorials that we have available along with a new tutorial series every single month. Uh, every single month, you could learn 3D and React, modern CSS layouts, testing with Cypress, Dino 101, code automation with GitHub, web components, and my personal favorites are these new Svelte courses that we have up here. So check it out at leveluptutorials.com. Sign up for the year and save 25%. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about NPM. Now, if you head to docs.npmjs.com, and it says that the package.json must be actual JSON and valid JSON and not a JavaScript object, meaning no comments, no trailing commas, those types of things. But it doesn't really tell you anything about what the heck it is. This, this is, hey, this is a document that has your stuff in a JSON file. Here's what's in it. But what the package.json is, is essentially the, the, it's the source of truth for your package along with its dependencies. It describes all of the different types of external libraries that you might use in a given project, but it also describes some things about the project, the project's name, its version, its authors, its GitHub location. In fact, you can see here that some of the key properties that you need um, is it, it needs a name. And the name must be less than 214 characters. I didn't know it could get that high. That's pretty sweet. Uh, but it's it's usually, uh, typically, it's a short short name. And sometimes it includes the scope of things as well. For instance, um, if we head over to the level up tutorials package.json, and let's look at our Svelte UI, you can see that some of these packages have a name like at level up tuts Svelte toy. That's defined if we where the package name for this project is just level up tutorials, you can see here that many other projects do use something to prefix it, to scope it to a specific name, and it would be done there in the name. So it gives the name of a project. Uh, it also gives the version. Now, uh, version stuff is actually pretty neat because when you publish a package for other people to use on NPM, the version is very important. You update the version. That's how NPM users know that there's something new for you to, to download for their app. And you can use Semver, uh, which is semantic versioning. That's how it should be done, um, where you have, I be believe it's major, um, like a, a breaking release, a uh, feature release, and then a patch release, to be honest, I don't uh, no, if that's 100% accurate, but you use semantic versioning for that. There's also ability to add a description. It's a string that allows people to help discover your package if you're trying to make this thing available to other people. Same thing with keywords, right? You're putting keywords on this. It also allows you to set a home page, maybe the location to where bugs are living if it's not GitHub, the license that you have for this project, whether or not people know what they can do with this project, whether or not they can uh, fork it, use it their own, make it their own or not. It also adds you, allows you to add authors to this, um, maybe even funding stuff. It's a lot of neat things. So without getting too much into the weeds here, the package.json is a file at the root of your project that tells all sorts of tools about what your project is, what it's about, what it includes, and all that and more. Now, it's often described as the manifest for your project, as in this is the key list of all of the most important things in your project. What's funny is that I, I you know, I'm, I'm not great with words. So when I went looking for manifest to, to figure out how that definition plays into it, I believe the only definition I could find <laughs> that was, that was, um, that it related to that was about how the manifest is a list of passengers or an invoice of cargo on a vehicle. So I would assume that the word manifest to describe like a project manifest in programming comes from that. There's also like a manifest.json file too. 
So I don't know if the origins for the word manifest used in that manner uh, relate to that, but it does make sense. This is a list of all of the things in your project, whether that is third party libraries and dependencies, the license, the name, it's all of the information and data about your project so that various tools, whether it is your continuous deployment and integration setup, your testing, your scripts that run, those things all know what to do or where to go. Now, another neat thing that I would have to talk about before we um, get off this is that you can have scripts inside of NPM. Now, another thing that I wanted to touch on before we wrap this up is that you can have scripts inside of a package.json and you'll see these a lot. So beyond, um, you know, all of your normal configuration, your info, you can also have scripts in here that can be run via things like NPM run or just yarn blank to run these things. And these are very commonly used inside of applications. So the things that people are probably most familiar with inside of package.json would be your dependencies. These are your third-party libraries, your dev dependencies, which are again, third-party libraries, but for development um, name. But scripts again is a huge one where you would run npm run build. That would then fire off a command that does something. In our case, svelte kit build or check, check, watch, dev, dev, build, whatever. You can have as many scripts in here as you want. And these things can be used to do all sorts of things, whether that is running your project, minifying it, getting ready for production, testing it, or anything like that. They can be defined all in here with inside of your package.json. So package.json is the place for all of the data about your project. And you should get very familiar with not only what's inside of here, but what can be inside of here. Because there's a lot of features in this thing that maybe people don't take advantage of as much as they could. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And one more thing is that package.json, uh, I believe this was created by NPM in 20, 2010, um, where NPM was really the first major package registration, uh, registry. So package.json really started out as a way for you to be able to describe your projects and list dependencies to work well with NPM, but it now is basically ubiquitous across all tools, all package managers, and anything that you're working with inside of a node project. You'll very infrequently see other package managers used in JavaScript. I know uh, Meteor has their own package manager, but other than that, there is not too many other package managers that are fighting for this space. So a package.json is going to be a skill that you need to have in your tool belt. Hope this helps. As always, this is Scott with leveluptutorials.com. If you want more information on creating a package.json or what you need in here beyond just what the heck this thing is, head on over to docs.npmjs.com. You can find all of that and more. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.